Welcome back subscribers. So this is a little bit different video. I'm kind of sort of mad at the AMA. Uh, if you all watch Seattle, what happened in the 250 LCQ and then what happened in the main event. The first thing I want to talk about is there's not that many pros racing. <laughs> there, everyone that signed up qualified. So everyone that signed up to race got to race the night show and got paid. So the 250 riders, there's only 39 riders. The 450 guys, there's only 39 guys. So you instantly, if you're racing the 450s, made 1,800 bucks. Something needs to change. They need to, so that we can get more riders to race these events. I, I don't know what else to say. This Supercross Futures thing, and what they were doing with Arena Cross, I, I, I don't know. And. Personally, it seems like everyone is getting hurt. It's been happening in the last few years. The tracks have been getting a little bit more technical, and all the riders have been getting rather injured to a, a severe, severe extent. Uh, even in this race, we saw Chad Reed and Justin Brayton. Chad Reed, he made he made a mistake and and popped sideways and ended up getting landed on by Chisholm, and he says that he broke eight ribs and collapsed lung and he's looking to get out of the hospital I think today and then Justin Brayton says that he might have tore his ACL or his MCL hopefully it's just his MCL because sometimes that doesn't require surgery and you don't need to be out for six months but the other thing that I wanted to talk about was what happened in the 250 LCQ so we all saw Howell get block pass um, by Jorgensen and he hopped off the track and he didn't gain a position the rule book says you can't gain a position he got back on safely and ended up finishing fourth qualifying for the main event but they docked him a position so that privateer didn't get a race the main event which I thought was a, a really bad call Ricky Carmichael even said it that it was a bad call if you're not gonna follow the rule book why would you do it in the 450 class so we all saw Marvin Muscan win. He had a, a dominant ride that was g good for him, but we all saw what happened on the Red Cross flag. He ended up jumping, okay, and he did not get docked a position. The rule book actually states that if the rider wins, he will not lose the race, but he'll get docked, penalized two position points, so two positions, whether second and third, and then plus two more points, which adds up to seven. So he was docked seven points for that. But he got to keep his $100,000 bonus from KTM and the $25,000 purse for winning the event, which I think is is fairly, is silly. You know, Red Cross flag is a serious, serious offense. You could really hurt a rider if you land on them or if you in, inhibit the medical staff getting to a rider in any shape or form, especially me being a rider, I'm sure you guys have been there too, you would like to get help rather quickly if something serious is going on, whether you need to get flight for life out, if it's at a motocross track, or, or whatever it may be. You, you want riders to be cautious. So I personally don't agree with that either, but Gallagher, the top AMA official, says he went by the rule book. But he didn't go by the rule book in the LCQ. So is it something to do because it's Marvin Muscan, not some three-digit pro rider? It's, I don't know, I'm, I, it, it bugs me. And, and I'm kind of rambling on here. Uh, I'm not really editing anything out, so it's 100% me, raw footage. But I want to know what you guys think of the 250 call, the 450 call, and potentially these injured riders and having honestly not that many pros show up because it's expensive to race. It's 350 bucks for your pro license. Uh, it's 20 grand to have a semi-competitive 250. I know when I was racing, all those 250s were making 50 plus horsepower. And if you know anything about dirt bikes, you know a 250 stock makes right around 30 to 40, depending upon where you live as far as sea level goes and they blow up rather quickly if you ride them hard. It's not advantageous money-wise to race a 250, 
Okay, so most people race 450s, but then again, the level of competition on 450s, you've got so many past factory riders and uh, guys that have two digit numbers that have been a, a championship holder in the past, it's hard to even be competitive in something like that. There's so much money behind it, the sport is going broke, and we can see it by the riders not showing up. Supercross is the number one attraction for two-wheel motorsports. Motocross is not it. You get 40 to 50,000 people in a stadium for Supercross. You get 20 to 15,000 on an outdoor national. Okay, it's more for hardcore fans to go race motocross and watch motocross supercross everyone wants to see rex or whatever but it's in major cities so people want to go there so i personally think it's our, our sport is dying because of how expensive it is and the riders need more of an incentive to to want to race all right 1800 bucks sounds cool for the 450 class to qual qualify 40th and you get to run the night show which is cool um, but it's only a small uptick in money if you make the main event I think it's up to like 2500 bucks for 20th and the 450 class don't quote me I have to look up the numbers but they haven't changed for like the last four years which is insane because uh, tickets have gone up but purse to the riders hasn't changed and uh, quite honestly you know Marvin Muscan winning 25 grand he makes more money from the factory with his contract plus the bonus he got for winning the race somebody that qualifies 40th you can get um, some contingency from Honda or KTM but if you look on their websites it's not much either it's like 500 bucks to make a main event which isn't a whole lot when it was $400 to enter and you probably spent 800 bucks in gas and travel and food to get to that that one race and not to mention we're talking brand new tires brand new clutch all this yada 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 i really believe we need a a stock class in in professional racing where it's a spec fuel spec um, bike uh, from the manufacturer uh, spec tire um, you can only change small modifications there's no this unobtainium stuff where you know a factory bike weighs 30 pounds less and makes 30 more horsepower and it's not just unrideable horsepower it's very usable power the transmissions only have three gears when you go buy a bike and it's got five like there's there's so many advantages that money brings to the sport and yes I'm a little jaded and biased when it comes to this topic but again I'm gonna just end the video what do you guys think of the rule book? What do you think of anything that I've said? Do you guys want to give me some feedback as far as Johnny, shut the hell up. It is what it is. You're washed up. You're not racing anymore. Just enjoy racing. Or you agree with me. Let me know. All right. Till next time, this is Johnny. I am going to make some videos on doing my track, redoing some, some tracks because I've been getting some good feedback on that and some riding tips as well and hopefully i'll see you guys at the races just have fun riding and you know let me know what i can do to help ah. all right well i did it though